All right, in this video, we want to create a bijection. Basically, we just want to be able to map the set of real numbers to this set A. And in order to create a bijection, basically, it needs to be countable. I've talked about countability before, but essentially, it's the idea of being able to kind of associate every single number in this set A with every set with every single number in the set of n. So for example, if I were to just draw a line from 0 to 4, 1 to 5, 2 to 6, 3 to 7, 4 to 8, and so forth, then we could say that this is countable because if I had an infinite amount of time, I would eventually be able to count this set. And we're assuming that both of these go on until infinity, but they both have the same cardinality. The cardinality of the natural numbers is going to be infinity, which is also equal to the cardinality of the set A, which is going to be infinity. But in order to create a bijection, all we really need to do is have a mapping. We want to have a mapping where we have N going to A, and then we want to have a mapping with A going back to N. That's all we really need to do here. So in other words, we need to have some function f of x where every single input where the input x is going to equal every single value of the natural number, and then we want it to output our value that we have here in a. So this is pretty straightforward. All we really need to do is say that we have x plus 4, and then in order to go from a back to n, we just need to have f of x is equal to x minus 4. Because when we're going from a back to n, our x input is going to be the value that we have here in a. So basically what we're saying is that if we're going from n to a, we pick a number from n, 3 for example, and we put that into our function, we get 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. Well that means that 3 maps to 7. And if you were paying attention earlier, we saw that 3 does indeed map to 7. And of course the power of this is that, you know, I could pick any random number that is in the natural numbers. And I have no idea, I'm not going to write every single number out, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so forth, all the way up to 1,003. But I know that when I plug it into this function, all I have to do is add 4, and that will map to 1,007. So that is essentially what it means to be countable. Now we want to do the exact same thing, but with the integers. And this is all of the integers, the positive and the negative, and including 0. But if we write this out in a way that it's negative 1, negative 2, and then going all the way to infinity, and then going from 0 back up to 1, then to 2, then to infinity, it's a little hard to see how we're going to map this, right? If we start mapping things from 0 to 0, 1 to 1, 2 to 2, what's really going to happen is that we're going to keep on mapping things and then keep on going all the way to infinity. But then we have all these numbers of negative numbers that have not been accounted for. So a clever way that people have gotten around this is to say that we have 0, comma, negative 1, then we have 1, then we have negative 2, then we have 2, negative 3, and so forth, all the way up to infinity. That way we can properly map 0 to 0, 1 to negative 1, 2 to 1, 3 to negative 2, 4 to 2. So in order to map the natural numbers to the integers, we can use the formula f of x is going to be x divided by 2 if the number is even, or negative x plus 1 divided by 2 if it is odd. But now we can see when we look at uh, our natural numbers here and we plug in each natural number in for x, we can see that 0 divided by 2, that's going to be 0 because 0 is an even number. Then 2 divided by 2, that is going to be equal to 1, which is what we have here. 4 divided by 2, that is going to be equal to 2. And likewise, for all of the odd numbers, we just have this formula x plus 1 divided by 2, and then we take the negative of that. So for example, 1 plus 1 is going to be 2 divided by 2, that's going to be 1. That maps to a negative 1. And we can see that that is the case here. And you can go through and prove that this is true for whatever value you want to. If I want to know, you know, what the natural number 2048 is associated with in the integers, well, clearly all I got to do is divide it by 2, and I can see that it's 1024. So again, this is assuming that both of the sets are countable, meaning that if we had an infinite amount of time, we could count the elements that are in the integers. But the other crazy thing to think about is that the set of all integers, from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity, is the exact same size as the set of numbers from 0 all the way to positive infinity. 
So you would think that there would be more in the integers because you have zero all the way to negative infinity. What about all that? But the, based on the concept of infinity, they're actually the same size. And if we wanted to get a mapping back from the integers to the natural numbers, we just need to do this backwards. So to get from z to n, all we need to do is say f of x. That's going to be this function where we have 2x. Now you might be tempted to say even. It's actually going to be if it's positive, if it's a positive number. I should probably write an if here. If, if positive. If the input is positive, then we're going to have 2x. And again, we're mapping from the integers back to the natural numbers. So if our integer that we're trying to figure out is 2, we just multiply that 2 times 2, and we get our mapping 4. And then again, we just need to undo this, where we have x plus 1 divided by 2. That's going to be equal to some value y. So what we would have is 2y minus 1, and then all of that, and then we would take the negative of that. Here we could write negative 2x minus 1. And that is if it is negative. And that is it. We have our function that goes from n to z, and we have our function that goes from z back to n. And because both of these are the same cardinality, they are countable, and we have a bijection between the both of them.